Good morning, church. Oh, my mic is not on. Good, good. Good morning, church. Happy Sunday. We need to welcome back Susanna. It's been a while. So glad to have her back. Thank you, Lord. When all I see is a battle, you see the victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain moved. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Hallelujah. When I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, battle belongs to you. Belongs to you. Every fear I 
on our knees. We don't fight against flesh and blood. As the word says we're against principalities and powers. So what are we doing murmuring, complaining, walking around the wilderness? And we should be down on our knees with our hands lifted high saying, oh God, oh God, intervene, intervene. Make a way where there seems to be no way. He's the God of the impossible. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus. We've seen what you can do, O oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before, in greater measure, you will do again. Let's sing that one more time. We've seen what you can do. O oh God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before, in greater measure, you will do again. Cause there's no prison wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move. Oh, things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up God trust in you alone cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can't move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible Night. You can light it up. You can 
testimony um, where it, it comes from what it the uh, meaning of it um, is do again there's uh, in the Greek or the Hebrew or somewhere in there um, it's do again and so when we testify when we speak of the things that God has done for us or if we recall the things from the word it sends out into the spirit a do it again a do-over I want to do it again I want to I want to pour out my spirit on all flesh it says in the last days I want to pour it out all over again and you you know we read the story in the in the Bible and they're in the upper room and they're waiting and he says don't leave the city don't leave don't move until I move 
And when I move, I'm going to empower you and I'm going to fill you so that you can overflow and that you can do great and amazing things. And as we read about it, it happens. But see, the thing is, is that he also said, greater things are you going to do. There's more. Guys, there's more. But in the testimony, we need to recall those things. We need to testify of the goodness of God. We need to start to speak. We need to start to remind ourselves. We need to get into the spirit realm, the goodness of God. We need to start to remind the devil who's in charge. We need to remind him he's, he's, uh, he's lost this war. It is over. It is over. But we need to begin to testify. And it was something that was in my spirit this week is a do it again. I want to do it again. And so if there is something in the word or if there is something you're like, well, gee, God, you did it for them, but I'm still waiting. See, the Bible says, I want to do it again. The testimony is the spirit of prophecy. And when you begin to testify, that's why we're supposed to build each other up. And it says to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. When God does something good for somebody, rejoice with them. Because guess what? You're next. You're next. God wants to do it again. So begin to testify and to begin to speak those things. And so when we, it was Eva this morning, she said, Mom, can we do God a revival? I'm like, yeah, that's awesome and I'd love to do God of Revival and when I, we started singing it and I said the things you've done before in greater measure you'll do again and it just it brought it all back to me what was in my heart this week um, what was about the, the spirit of testimony and it being the the spirit of prophecy so begin to testify, begin to speak of those things that are not as though they are because God wants to do it again, amen? Amen because we're his beloved we have favor. I've heard the accusation. I've heard the propaganda. I've heard the lies they whispered to my soul. That I have been forsaken and I'll always be forgotten. No matter what I do, it's not enough. But, but then I heard a voice as it opened up the heavens, reminding me of who I've always been. I am your beloved, you have bought me with your blood, and on your hand you've written or any condemnation when I look into my father's eyes they don't see my sin they only see redemption because this is how my heart has been defined and I can hear a voice is louder than thunder, reminding me of who I've always been. I am your beloved, you have bought me with your blood, and on your hand you've written out my name. I am your beloved, the one the Father loves. Give it. 
generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning oh hallelujah 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 oh, i feel his presence here this morning in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 and your family and your children and their children and the children may his prayer oh take it take it this morning oh we are oh we're declaring some things this morning oh he is with you he is with you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you hallelujah may his favor go before you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you oh it's stirring it's stirring it's stirring in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you he is for don't let oh, don't forget it he is for you he is not against you he is for you he is not against you hallelujah Amen. Amen. Ah, oh, let it be, let it be. Amen. Amen. Ah, oh, let it be. and your family and your children and their children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 i just need to walk around a little bit i hope that's okay i just there's something happening in families this morning there's something happening in families oh from generation to generation just by you standing here this morning your children and your grandchildren and they that be afar off take it this morning just being here this morning just being here 
just being in this presence being in the atmosphere that which God has begun oh he is faithful to complete it in the name of Jesus that which he has begun he is faithful to complete it in the name of Jesus that which he has begun oh Giselle and your family that which he has begun he is faithful to complete it things may look grim things may not look good right now but he is faithful to complete it because God is faithful God is faithful when he has begun he has started a good work and he was he is faithful to complete it from generation to generation to generation to generation in the name of Jesus because you are here this morning because you have made a decision for Jesus your children your grandchildren those that be afar off your moms your dads your aunts your uncles all the all the people in your sphere of influence will be blessed because of you they will be blessed because of you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh Jesus oh that you would pour out your spirit that you would pour out your spirit that you would pour out your spirit before you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you amen 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 you know that just means let it be lord Amen. We'll risk an amen and uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. How's everybody doing? We doing good? 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 Things are happening? Amen. Uh, Susanna is uh, back. She was been away since before Christmas. A little bit of a journey. I'm sure she has a testimony for us to uh, tell us. Uh, so, <laughs> something to share? <clears throat> the testimony is you can, the Lord will do it again for somebody else. So. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. 
Very good. You just go ahead and just, something's on your heart. Something the Lord did for you while you were away. You were away for six months, I guess, right? Uh, four months and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Seems like six, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. No, I just want to say thank you and just, I went to uh, Cape Breton. I left Cape Breton to Africa and I end up to be called to my own country for the Ukrainian war. I'm from Slovakia and I end up in the Slovak border. And you can never be prepared for anything like that. And as we just think today about blessing the generations, it just come to me that all those children are blessed to the generations and we just don't see and we don't understand. But nobody could be at the borders. Nobody to, could do anything without people like you who are praying for everybody who is there. Uh, there is not human possibility that you can see what you see and you can sleep next day and you can wake up and go back. Then know that through your worshiping and your words, your prayers, your encouragement, that is the blessing for generations and generations. Mm. Amen. 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 That's so why I heard that she had gone to the, uh, the border of her own country, which was bordered on the Ukraine to be there to help refugees. I thought, well, somebody right from here, from the house that's been here for the last few years. And uh, she's somebody that always wants to help. Uh, before she left, she would come in at uh, around 7.30 in the morning and set up the chairs for everybody. And then to uh, be on the border helping refugees. So she's quite a girl to, uh, to do all that she does for the kingdom of God. Also a girl here, uh, Kenda, I think is her name, right? She, she's still here? So anyway, she hasn't, uh, well, two and a half years ago that she, she was here. Uh, Kenda, can you come up for a minute? And uh, she was here for perhaps, you here for a whole year? Do you think you were here when you were here? Okay. And uh, uh God just did something very miraculous in her life, and uh, she lives where uh, she lives where we grew up in Pictou County. That's that's where she lives, and she's been attending the Christian Fellowship Church there since she left here. And uh, I'm sure she's got a testimony or something to say about the two years that you've been gone, and uh, it's just something that God's done for you. Oh, what hasn't He done for me? Um... He's definitely, he's given me my children back. Um, he's freed me from addiction. Um, he's been moving mountains for me. Mm. Um, you know, I, I had, I, I'm just surprised, you know, um, coming in into the house, I was so scared and broken. And um, he definitely rose me up from the ashes. Um, he makes moves for me. I just completed my first year in college. Um, I'm taking social services. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and now I'm so honored because I get to come up and spend the weekend with the women. And, you know, I think I needed this more than anybody else. Um, I was scared. I haven't left my children since I came, went home. Um, so I was nervous, you know, but um, it's very humbling and, you know, to see the women and see them interact with their children and, you know, um, I feel God in the house Hallelujah. and, you know, it's, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing and I'm, on, I'm honored to be here. And, you know, this feels like home to me. You mm -hmm. know, this is where I got to rebuild my life and, you know, become the best version of myself. And I could not have done that without God and Jesus, without mm. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Just stay for a second. Uh, something that the Lord has showed me uh, just this week is, has been his open hand. He said that he's opened his hand to the, to the church. And uh, when you came in today, I thought God's, again, the voice of the Lord was, I've opened my hand towards her. And we sang that song today about the Lord has put your name on his hand. But you know, if the hand is closed, you can't see the name. And so God said, I've opened my hand towards you. So you can see your new name that he's given you and the new opportunities. Also with an open hand, there's always an open flow. 
And things that we struggle with will become easy because of the anointing. So just stretch your hands towards her. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the journey. And Lord, for the distance you've taken her to today. And that, Lord, that I see your open hand before her. And so things that had to be worked on will even become easier than they were in the past. Because your hand that goes before her open doors, gives her favor, and opportunity will be knocking at her door for promotion and for success. Lord, I thank you for that today. We all agree in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, got, I have an announcement to, to, to make from the ladies group, the, the Bible study group. They're inviting all the ladies in the church to a fellowship time at Kiju's restaurant uh, on Saturday, June the 11th. And if you'd like to attend, uh, Virginia's given her number. You can call her or text her. Uh, if you'd like to attend that, any of the ladies that are here that would like to go to that. It's uh, 6.30 in the evening on Saturday, June 11th. So just let Virginia know that you'd like to go to that. And uh, she will make sure you have a seat. Hallelujah. Well, I'm excited about being here today. I was, I was excited about uh, coming. I wasn't, I'm never sure what's going to happen, but I was excited anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, do you remember the first time you came to the church? Do you remember the, the, your first Sunday here? Yeah, nervous, scared to death. Uh, what's this church like? What are they going to do? What are they not going to do? Uh, is it safe here? Can I be comfortable? Can I relax? And then by the third or fourth Sunday, you have it figured out, right? Song, for, song service, sermon, and see you later. <laughs> Pretty much... The function is song service, sermon, see you later. And it's, it's, it's okay to, uh, to relax and enjoy those things, but there's something about the expectation of more that also needs to be with us. We need to, we know, we need to be able to take what we have during the week and come here, but we need to, to believe that that can change. It's not just the song service, it's not just the sermon, it's not just the see you later. But while I was here, God deposited something in my life that will strengthen me and give me power for the, the season that's coming. See, we're all going to go ahead into the next season, whether you like it or not. The question is, will you be prepared for it with expectation, or will you... Um, that's the problem with expectation. Expectation sometimes, once you get it down pat, you come in and just relax. That, that's a problem. You get in a relationship and you just relax. You get married hoping to relax. Wake up. You have to put greater expectation in your marriage than you did in your dating life. Expectation should be something that grows and grows and grows and coming into the kingdom. You should never grow weary in well-doing. You should never get to the place where church is just regular. Somebody attended our service and, they, I, and uh, I was talking to them and I said, well, what did you think? He said, well, you know at the gas station how you have the different levels. Yeah, I said, yeah. He said, this church is high test. He said, this church is, he said, this is a premium grade of uh, gasoline here in this house. And uh, the, the thing is, is that if you come expecting more, you may receive more. But if you don't expect anything, you should match, you will, your, your expectations will, that you have are often matched by your expectations that you had before you ever came. But if I came seeking God, and I come looking for a word, I came believing God, I came trusting God, I came that God's going to do something great today, God's going to do a miracle today in the house, God's going to do something for somebody, i just like to be there, because I expect something good is about to happen. Something good is on its way. And God would have never opened his hand towards us, and, and said to, saying to me, I have an open hand towards the church. That means that the things he has are going to be revealed. The things that are hidden are going to be exposed. I believe we live in a, uh, a fantastic time to be the church. 
that it, it, is, uh, it is what uh, was said, that this is the best of days in the midst of the worst of days. But really it's the testing of your faith that proves your faith. And even to be still sitting here, they said that across Canada, the statistics said that a third of the church has left the church and won't be back to church. And I said, well, a third of the angels fell from heaven. That's okay. We still got two good thirds and we're still here. We're still believing in God and God is going to do something great for his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So living by faith means I can't put God in a box. Living by faith means that I, I can't just say, well, what he did last week, he'll do next week. And he'll do the next week after that and the next week after that. And what he did three years ago, what he did five years ago, what he did five years from now, will all be the same. Well, if that's all we believe, then we are among men most miserable. Because we're only enduring till we get to heaven. Instead of believing that God can change things here on earth. We, we have prayed for people and seen total turnarounds. Total Total, total, miraculous. Uh, Kendra that was standing here uh, came with a whole set of issues that are no longer her issues because something marvelous, something miraculous, something beyond man's touch, beyond the open hand of any man, came the hand of God who reached down into her life and she is totally changed. Well, you're here today. You need to be expecting that something good can happen in your life. If, if I said the statement, I said, God wants to do his next miracle in this house. You should be saying, that's, me, that's mine. That's mine. I'm getting that one. Not, well, I wonder who he's talking about. My expectation is he's talking about me. Tell your neighbor, he's talking about me. He's talking about me. I'm going to receive a miracle in this place today. He's talking about me. It's my turn to receive a miracle. It's not my brother or my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. He's talking about me. And when we get to that place of expectation, then we get into, into the realm that anything can happen. Anything can happen. I used to think that God's not going to do anything that would... I would consider to be foolish. And then the Bible says, he takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I, I was done, right? I had to say, God, whatever you do, I have to be willing to go with you, even when I don't understand. When I can't track you, I still need you then to carry me. If I, so sometimes you follow God, he just got to pick you up and say, well, listen, this is the way we're going. And uh, I said last week, I said, we're, we're, we're either uh, coming into, uh, leaving, we have to leave something to come into something. We're, the process of seasons is always going on. And I want to declare that uh, the season, this past season's over. Now you can either receive that or say, well, no, I think we're still going to be enduring for a few more years. Because some people said, oh, this is going to last for generations. No, no, the Lord declared over me, I've opened my hand towards the church. They that receive it will have a, a, an anointing for a new day. Those that only hear it and don't believe it will stay in their trouble for a long time. I do not need to stay in my trouble for a long time when I received a word from God. If I don't have any word to go on, well, then maybe I do get to hang around my problem. But the key to my future is not to be dismayed by my past. The key to my future is not to be dismayed. So when something is coming to me, then, then I have to be willing to let go of something in me to reach what my potential is before me. So anytime God's given me, I have some seeds up here today. And uh, any time that God gives me a seed. This is the truth though. Why don't you catch this one? Everything that God gives you will be in seed form. He, he will give you something to plant in you. He'll give you a word. He'll give you a promise. He'll give you a potential. He'll plant that in you. He'll say, here, here's the seed. With that seed, all I'm given now is Opportunity. So if I took these seeds, I gave everybody a seed. We all have the same opportunity. The question will be, is who will plant the seed to get the harvest, not who has the seed. 
Your potential is not in the seed you have, it's in the seed you plant. Come on, somebody. I'm the planting of the Lord. And, and so hearing, being a hearer only, there's, a, there's a, 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 a scripture in Hebrews 4 and 2 that says, uh, gives us a little bit of a revelation here. Because this is really where it separates. When, when you read this scripture, you're going to understand a lot about uh, the potential that God has and how that he, 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 he's equal to everybody. But the difference is, watch this, the difference is, Watch this. The difference is, did I say this? Watch this. The difference is, I'll say it in the Greek. Watch this. It says, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to everyone else. Everybody. Everybody's heard the gospel. Everybody's sitting in church somewhere. Everybody uh, would say, well, I know there's a God or a higher power. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Not being mixed not just in your ear, but being mixed with faith in your heart. In those who... It's possible for you to hear it and never receive anything. But if you would hear it and mix it with faith... See, what's salvation? Salvation is a free gift. Who can have it? Everybody. Who can have freedom today? Who can have healing today? Who can have deliverance today? Who can have all that God has today? Who, who's, who's Everyone. The difference is those that mix it with faith and those that don't. I believe. I believe in the old rugged cross. I believe in the hill called Mount Calvary. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I've mixed it with the faith in my heart. And I've been transformed and changed with faith in God. And if I don't mix it with faith, it's just a word. If I don't plant the seed, it's just a seed. If I don't become the planting of the Lord along the rivers of Babylon, if I don't become planted in, 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 in a place... This is the other thing I found about a seed. Uh, go to the store and you buy some seed. You, you should know this. i got to have good ground to put it in. Right? So this morning I could give you all the same seed, but the seed will look for good ground to put it in. So now, this is where the work of giving you the seed is God. The work of working the soil is you. You see, this is where transformation is. Not, not in the seed. The seed is not looking for rocky ground or shallow ground. Or too hot ground, sunny, or the bright sun. It's looking for a good place to be planted. So what I do is when I receive a word from God, I look in my life and say, Lord, where should I plant this? Where, where can I? And God said, well, that's in the way. That's in the way. Oh, well, I'll need to refine that. I'll need to change that. I'll need to, I'll need to. See, so Paul said, uh, uh, forgetting those things behind. I, I got, there's some things, there's some things you should leave behind. Some of your history is not all of your testimony. There's some things you need to forget. There's some things you need not to mention again. It's not glorifying God to bring up the devil in your life. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What the devil did to destroy you is not the power of God to deliver you. And so there's some things that I've said to myself, well, I don't need to talk about that again. I don't need to discuss that again. Because God's given me an open hand and said, I want to do miracles in the house of God. It's not, it's not by... A chance that Amy this morning, who haven't talked to, uh, felt, she said, I feel led just to walk around the room. That's the first time in about three years that that's happened. But it's a new day. It's a new anointing. It's a new time. It's a new season to receive some seeds in the house of God. God wants to do something that he's never done before in the sense he wants to do things for everybody. He wants to open his hand to everybody. You're sitting here today, not by accident, not by mistake, not even by choice. God has ordered the steps of people to hear a word that they might receive a seed. Amen. And we'll take that seed and use it and, and mix it with our faith today because we're all going to hear the same thing. Well, close to here. But I need to accept the fact or receive the fact that God wants to anoint me in spite of my past. God is not looking at my history to figure out my destiny. And so I do believe in the supernatural. 
power of God. You know, the show on television, it's supernatural or whatever. It, it's one thing to watch a program. It's another thing to believe in your heart that the supernatural still help, happens today. And it's possible that God's going to do a miracle in your heart right now. Now, you need to tell somebody, he's talking about me. He's, he's talking about me. He's, he's talking about... You might think it's for you, but no, it's for me. He's going to plan something. God's going to plan something in me today that's going to miraculously change my life. I, I, I thought of the 12 disciples who followed Jesus, and they never knew what the day would bring. They'd get up in the morning and say, what kind of a day are we going to have today following Jesus? It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be mind-blowing. It's going to be, well, somebody's likely to get healed today. He's probably feed another multitude. Hey, maybe he'll raise the dead. Maybe he'll do this and maybe that. The expectation was God can do anything. When we come to church, we've become so accustomed to a song service, a sermon, and a see you later. But we need to come expecting into the house of God that God can do anything. And he probably will. He can do a miracle today. The, the day of signs and wonders is still today. That in future generations, not only uh, when, when we're reading the Hebrews, it's not only then, but it says into the future. That's us. As long as we're still here, we still should be believing. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. We say Jesus is the same. Well, who's changed them? From the, re from the coming to church for the first time, not knowing what to expect, and a little bit of fear and trembling. So, well, I don't know. These people are a little weird. Why did that person raise their hand? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? But the truth is anything can happen if God's in it. Yes. And sometimes God will do something foolish to convince somebody else that he's God. And you'll think, oh, well, I don't know why they did that. I told you before, my mother came to the church. Very first time. I'd been saved for about a year. And... Uh, year and a half, I guess. And I said to God before she came, God, don't let anything weird happen in church today. My mother's going to be here. Everything was going well. Till somebody spoke in tongues. And I thought, that's the devil. I'm sure that's the devil. Huh? My mom, after that, came to church for the next six Sundays in a row, called me up and said, you pick me up for church? Pick me up. And I... Didn't know what to think. And I said, Mom, you've been coming to church for six weeks now. I said, what's up? Because she hated the fact that I went to church. She slammed the door. She had oh, nothing to do with me. She figured I had abandoned the, the, the household of atheism and uh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't good. And, and she said, remember the first Sunday I was there? I said, yeah. Oh, I remember. <laughs> right? And she said, well, that person spoke in that other language. She said, there's something happened in my heart. And the miraculous had touched her. Amen. And she said, I've been coming ever since because I want to hear it again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, I want him to do it again. Amy said, I want him to do it again. I want him to do it again. I want him to do it again. Anything he's past done, he can do again. And, and, and exceedingly abundantly above that which we can ask or think. Yes. So one person's coming up and testifying today that they've been set free. Is a testimony that we can all be set free if we mix it with faith. All she did was took, took the seed and mixed it with faith and put it in her life, and her life's been transformed. And not only transformed, see this, is, whoa, 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 whoa. The seed is the potential of harvest. The increase is in the seed, but the harvest is what we're looking for. See, I, I didn't get saved just to be saved. I'm thankful I'm going to heaven, but I didn't get saved just to go to heaven. But he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Healing the sick, transforming lives. See, the harvest is in the harvest field. When we get to heaven, that's going to be all good. I just don't want to get to heaven by myself. Just get there and just say, yeah, well, Lord, here we are. But I want to see the multitudes and the thousands and the thousands and the generations and the generations and those that have been faithful from one generation to the next generation because God is still the same yesterday today and forever. And the trouble is oftentimes we want a comfortable pew in a miraculous service. We want the service to be spectacular while we sit comfortably on the sidelines. But really the, 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 
The spectacular happens when the spectacular is expected. When you believe, and, 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 and I see the, the Lord just stirring faith and stirring things. It's in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 4. Let's stand together for this. Uh, here we are reading the scripture. And we're, don't anybody look at the clock. Okay, there we go. Or your phone or whatever you need. It says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, hello, today, hello, he was talking about me right there, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, mix that with, mix, 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 mix it up with faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. That seed is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast, you receive the seed freely. The work comes after you receive the seed to fix the soil. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for, stop being bad. Renew your mind. Stop thinking bad thoughts. Work on your, just that soil of your mind. Which God prepared beforehand that we should. We should. It's not a guarantee. But if I plant the seed, I will walk in good works. Father, I thank you for your word today. May it be a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll better grab a seat. I want to say this about this scripture. Do we believe it's true? I should ask you, do you believe it's true? Should we say it's true unless there's a pandemic? Should we say it's true except for my circumstances? Should we say, well, that's true, but God, God you wrote that and you didn't know how much trouble I was in. God, it's true... The, the seed is true, it's truly a seed, but you don't understand me. The power, it's a gift of God, not of works of you. Stop examining you and receive the seed, mix it with faith, and it will blossom and give you a harvest. It's not dependent on how good or bad you are. It's depending on will you receive it and then mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it with faith. It's like uh, uh, when Elsa's making a coconut cream pie. She's mixing, 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 mixing. I'm thinking, I only want to see the end result. I don't, you know. And to me, it's all mixed up. But the end result of the mixing. See, the end result of the seed you hear and the mixing of faith gives you a harvest. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good for he has been good to me. Amen. And so it's not unless there's a pandemic. It's not unless there is a problem. It is the fact that God's word is true. And when we are favored, see, I believe, and this is something I've always believed since I got saved, I've seen the favor of God Everywhere I went. God just favors. Now I'm not saying I'm his favorite kid. Well maybe I am. You can be second. It's all right. But I do believe, and I've always believed this, that since I got saved, I have received favor from God. Not in the condition that I was in, and saying, well, you still had a lot of work to do on you. But the gift was in spite of the job. How many know when you finish a week at work, you'd like to get paid? Now say you plan to work there for 30 years. Do you ask for all 30 years pay it the first week? <laughs> See, God's got blessings for us every week. His mercies are new every morning. He's got a paycheck written out for you today that there's a miracle coming to your house. Say, I want to receive a miracle that's coming to my house today. It's, it's, it's mine, mine, yes, blessed be his name. But there's the need for us because I believe that I'm walking in favor. When you believe something, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. You can say, well, according to my circumstances, this is what I expect. And I say, well, according to what I believe, 
this is what I expect. Because the challenge of the moment will always challenge the seed that you've received. And I would rather stand on the seed of the promise than on the circumstances that are before me. I would rather consult with God than consult with man. In the last two years, a little more, uh, the church that, does, that hasn't consulted with God has come up with an opinion from the internet. Now you have the seed, the Bible says his seed is truth. Now it doesn't say, and the internet will help you also. Now there's nothing wrong with information, unless it's negative information that questions the seed of your faith. See, see I, I never argued with people about their information, ever. Because according to you, you're right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm in here all by myself or what? This isn't a funeral parlor, is it? This is church, right? And, and, and so, but according to the seed, I defend the seed, not the circumstances. Christ in me is, is my hope. Christ in me is my hope, not the circumstances. So I go through things, believing the seed, believing what God's put in me. I believe, I believe, and I'm, uh, by the way, I'm called a believer. Hallelujah. Any other believers here in the house? Yes. Hallelujah. So our, our, our expectation of the future, I believe, is the key to my success in my future. In other words, I believe I'm going to have favor tomorrow. No, you're not there yet. Huh. Doesn't change what I believe. Say, well, I believe that this is going to happen. And say, well, that doesn't look very likely. Everything seems to be going the other way. It, see, if something going the other way changes what I believe, then I don't really believe it. Because I still believe. And I, and I refuse to think that something around me has, has somehow disturbed God and canceled His Word. Like, who has greater authority than God? He wouldn't have written it. He shouldn't have put it in the book if we couldn't believe it. Come on, somebody. He knew us before, before we were ever here. He wrote it down because we can believe it. But we need to choose to believe. We need to choose to mix it with faith. Amen. So it's, it's what I believe before I run into a problem. Because sometimes if I don't believe correct, the problem will last a long time. No wonder we need to renew our mind. Because we're stuck in a, a belief system that's wrong. So I believe. I'll give you this one. I believe the next spectacular miracle is going to happen in this house. Amen. Now, now you just see, this is what you should say. I believe he's talking about me. Come on, somebody. I believe he's talking about me. God hasn't changed, but he's looking for a people that are willing to expect that anything can happen. That not just expect, but believe. See, once I have the seed... I no longer have to believe that I'm going to receive potential. I already have potential. Right? When I receive Christ, it's not like, well, now I've got to go receive Christ. When I received him, I received a free gift. So when I received the seed, I already have the potential. I told uh, one of the grandchildren, I said, uh, God's going to give you uh, opportunity. I said, that's the best that God's going to do. He's going to give you opportunity. He'll give you opportunity for promotion. Oh, no, thank you. No, I can't receive that. Guess what you didn't receive, you didn't get. But when you say, well, I expect that's going to happen for me. I expect that I'm going to get promoted. I expect, well, why do you believe that? Because Christ is in me. And he told me no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I'm choosing to walk uprightly. I'm choosing to serve God. I'm so I expect favor in my life because of the way I act according to the seed I have. Amen. Hallelujah. I am a believer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say that again just in case you didn't get it. I am a believer. Amen. How many people can say, I am a believer? Amen. I am a believer. I am, I am, I am. I'm not was, w once was, because some people once was and no longer are, but they can still be sitting in church. But I'm looking for the people that say, I am a believer. I am who God says I am, and I believe. And so it's not a matter of 
harvest, the harvest is coming. To get to the harvest, you've got to believe. Because the time between planting and harvest, it might rain in your life. Somebody might drop some manure on you. And you think it's a bad thing. The seed's rejoicing. <laughs> Hallelujah. More nitrogen's into the ground now. Huh? And, and, and so we, sometimes we, we, Jesus said, and the storm will come. And the storm's going to come regardless if you believe or not. But those that believe when the storm is over will be standing on the rock. Amen. According to what I believe before the storm ever comes. See, some people found church to be a good social thing, uh, uh, like to go, it's a good community, there's good people that go there. Uh, I heard one church where there was a lot of young girls in the church, and so some of the young men in the community were saying, well, that's a good place to go get a date, that's a good place to find a girl. But I'll tell you, in the last two years, if you don't believe in God, you're no longer here, because there's something about the, the, the trial and the trouble of a storm that will, dis will disarm and dislodge and remove people and I, you look around and, like I said, there's, there's things that have happened. But I still believe. Amen. I still choose to believe. And if you're here for the right reason, no one can get rid of you. Come on. Yes, that's right. If you're not here for the right reason, anything will upset you. Hmm? Pastor didn't say hi to me this morning. I'm out of here. Those days are gone. Hello, you suffered the last two years coming to church and not getting to church and watching online and giving money online and all that stuff that you had to go through. It's been a storm. But when the storm is over, I'm declaring today, the storm's getting over and there's a new dawn, a new day, and the whole, God is going to open his hand towards the church and say, I have an open hand towards my people. I have an open hand towards my people. It's going to be good measure, pressed down and shaken together. I'm going to do a running over thing in my house. And that's going to cause a difference for all of us. If you'll mix it with faith. Can, can you do that? Can you mix it with faith and choose to believe? It's, it, when we lack faith, we lack the activation of God. But when we pick faith, God said he'd already perform it. I never give up, never surrender what I believe in spite of my circumstances. I don't want to be a hearer only. Tell your neighbor, I'm a doer. I, 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 I'm not a hearer only. I'm not, I'm not just somebody that hears. I'm not just somebody that... I, I've learned two things to do in my walk with God. One thing is to have great confidence in God and let that grow greater. And the other is, is to be not so confident in people. I'm not so confident in people because when it's the other way around, I'm not so confident in God, but I'm really confident in people. You have a recipe for disaster and disappointment and frustration. No wonder people are frustrated with what's going on in the world because they think the world can fix all this. It's the world that made the mess. It's greed and hatred and bitterness. All the things that the kingdom of God can cause us to drop off. The things that salvation brings great gifts to us. Where those things can be dropped off. Where I no longer need to hold bitterness in my heart. I can forgive. Why? Because I want the seed to germinate and give me a harvest. I want, some, 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 I want the next miracle to be mine. So I'm willing to, to drop off uh, revenge. I'll make them pay. There's no amount of payment... That will replace the seed that God has put in you if you cherish the seed. I want to close with this. I'm already out of time, so thank you for enduring the, the, uh, the length of this. When, when, when Amy and Jenny were small uh, in the house, uh, they, they would leave the light on in a room that they weren't in. Sometimes they'd leave milk on the counter that they weren't drinking. Oh, they'd take it out of the fridge. It was no problem getting it out. And it was no trouble to turn that light on. And there was no trouble to turn up the heat and open a window. And of course, as a parent who was paying for all this stuff, 
Very frustrating. Very frustrating. But now I've lived to redemption. I go to their house. They have kids. And now I sit and smile. I say, finally, Lord. Finally. Hallelujah. Finally. Here's the key. What costs you nothing, you have very little respect for. Jesus paid the greatest price to purchase you. We should in turn have the greatest respect for the God that we serve. To whom little has been given, well, little can be little. But to whom much has been given, I have received so much from God. I've received so many seeds, so many seeds, so many things that God has placed. And he said, Kevin, work the soil of your heart. Work your garden. I have no time to work anybody else's garden. But work your heart, work your garden, and I promise you a harvest. God's saying, I'm opening my hand towards the church. It's time for you to receive a harvest. Father, we bow in your presence today and we thank you. I thank you for those that endured the, uh, the length of this, God. I just appreciate the fact that people's hearts are open. Lord, I, I pray that for anyone here that does not believe, that they could believe today if they mix it with faith. Because the gift of salvation is free. But the condition is the mixing of their own faith with that truth that causes salvation to believe in the heart and confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. But if you doubt and, and don't mix faith with it, then you don't have it. I wanna say the same truth applies for everyone here that is saved. God has a seed for you today. God has a promise for you today. But if you don't mix it with faith, what he has provided in fullness, you have in scarcity because you don't mix it with faith. I pray for every believer here today, everyone that says that they believe, every believer would now mix the truth with faith and say, I'm gonna walk different leaving here. I'm going to expect favor this week. I'm going to expect healing. I'm going to expect, I'm going to expect to have a freer mind than I've ever had before. Because I'm going to mix this salvation with faith. And the promises are yes. And amen to them that. I'm a believer, God. I'm a believer. And Lord, when it's all said and done, and one day it will be all said and done because the trumpet will sound and we'll all be gone. When it's all said and done, may all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor for everything that's said and done to us collectively and to us individually, may all the glory go to God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's some seeds.